sovereignty, he's made it very clear that you should not associate partners with me. I created you. I'm asking you to fulfill my obligations that I've put for you. Why are you going to give that right to someone else? Because I created you so that in the hereafter, you can decide by your testing ground here whether you're worthy to go to a place of eternal happiness, joy, bliss, tranquility, contentment, or go to a place of misery, suffering, heaven and hell, right? We're talking about. Yes. But you decide based on your belief and your actions here. Yes. And he wants you to say, look, but hellfire, there's one way ticket to it if you do this kind of action of association. Yeah? If you do that. So if people do that with their own volition, they're free to do that. But the consequences is going to be that you'll never come out of hell. Okay? So this is very important. That's why, you know, I mean, there's two things I've shown you. It even came up on the page that I just opened it like that and the verse was there. I mean, did you mark it or something? I don't know. Right? So that's to show you before um, I finish it, um, what I was saying. So Speaker's Corner is really, really important. Very, um, very interesting. I, I... What's it called? Yes. Hagless. Yes, the same man, same man, I see. Look at that, look at that. So you'll find quite a few hecklers. This is one of them. I know, I know. Yeah? And I'll show you some more. There's a few others here. Oh, oh he's, he's coming again. Right, always, every discussion he has, there's, there's another one here. Yeah? There's another one here. Yeah? So be aware of those people who are not interested in conveying each people trying to explain their own belief system, but rather they're interested in disrupting um, and interfering with the discussions. And that's not good, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as I said, you've already had a discussion. I've given you some examples. I, I, Reflect. You sound very, very full of knowledge. Um, no, I know a little bit. Just, I, I, share, very, I only share well, what I know. You're a great communicator. I just want to say that. Uh, yeah. just, and I don't want to waste, I don't want you to feel like I'm wasting your time. No, no, I have time. So I, I have time. I have a question. I have time. Yeah, go ahead. So, I just. Um, I actually agree with so many of the things you said, and it's just uh, I have seen that I've I, I've seen that I, I deserve hell more. That, that's why. Why I do you say you deserve hell? What uh, have you done that you deserve hell? I've done many wrong things. Yeah. Okay, and, but and do you know what God says about people who think they have wronged themselves what in the say? Quran? Uh, this is one of the most profound ayah of the Quran. God says, "O oh my slaves, who have wronged themselves." Do not despair of the mercy of your God, of your mm. Lord. For surely he forgives all sins. He forgives all sins. And how does he, how does he make amends for my sin? Like how, how you, you need to firstly acknowledge. You need to forgive. You need to firstly acknowledge that you have done something wrong. Yeah? Acknowledgement. Secondly, immediately turn to God with sincere repentance, asking his forgiveness. And thirdly, you make the intention not to commit this sin again. So these are the three primary conditions. But there are a few others where you can say, and, and in addition to that recommended, in which you make amendments. If you have said something bad to someone, apologize and also make things right, say something good. If you've stolen, give it back and so on, right? So these things, and the other one is increasing doing more and more righteous actions. Because more and more righteous actions can wipe away the bad actions. In the Sayyid, the Quran says, no, 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 it will wash away, wipe away bad deeds. So there's a mechanism that God says, look, even if you have, I, mean, I want to share with you this. This is something that people don't know. I think many Christians even don't know, for example. Suppose you have an intention to do something bad. If you have that intention, you don't get a sin, right? If you do the act of that bad on that intention, you get one sin. But if you don't do it, having that intention, you actually get a reward for it. So even though you had intention and you don't do it, you get a reward. Right? But, if you, but, if you, but if you do it, it's not something that you get many bad actions, only one only one bad deed. Yes. Now, suppose you have a good intention. Even if you don't perform that action, you still get a reward because you had the intention to doing it. So can I just 
ask. Can I can I finish this point and then you can ask? Of course. Of course. Of course, of course. If you didn't do the good thing that you intended, you still get a reward. Look at the mercy of God. And if you did do it, he multiplies the action. What you've done rewards in seven, ten. Sorry? Yeah, I see. Oh, sorry. I'm not. Okay. I didn't, I didn't do that. Okay. So that. Yeah, yeah. Just, you can give it to them back. Yeah, we can go somewhere else. That's fine. So that's what happened now. They're now in, involved in our discussion. Yeah. So your question, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. It was just. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's come here. Let's talk. Yeah, go ahead. What's your name? My name is Jesse. Jesse, I am Mansoor. A pleasure speaking sorry, to you. Sorry, what was What's your name? name? Yeah, Mansoor. Mansoor. Man Mansoor. Mansoor. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'll be up front. Uh, why, are why are you pushing? Why are you pushing? Why are you pushing? Why are you pushing? This is our discussion, not yours. I'm sure. I, I, yeah, I, I, Jesse, have a look at have a look at the head list. He's pushing. He was pushing. Why? Yeah. I'll tell him. I would, I would like I'm not interested in um, uh, this kind of heckling. I've told him already. It's okay, I can so, talk if I want to talk. Uh, like to go over there, have your own ladder. It doesn't matter. I can well, talk here yeah. there. You need us. Without Thank us, you. in fact, now, Jesse, you know what something? To stop there are some people... And bullying Christians. We need you to stop harassing okay. and have you ever Christians felt? in the park. The new Christians. Am I bullying you or harassing you? Yes, you are. You have been talking. Ask him. You haven't even got a chance to say a word. Talk to him. You need to... Stop hacking. Stop hacking. I'm not talking to you. Bunch of hacklers. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you. Bunch of hacklers. Bunch of hacklers. Get out. So, Jesse, do you want to tell this gentleman that you know what you just said? Let me ask you again. Yes. Do you feel that I'm bullying you or harassing you? Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. You're so now, you know, no, no, no. go somewhere else. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, like not, I'm not calling him a liar, but I'm not saying. No, no, I'm just saying, gentlemen, okay. go somewhere else. False accusation that we are harassing you. Well, that's you can that's say. No, just yes. Continue, continue your question. Sorry, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, don't be. Um, well, as you, you, I am. At, I, I have. At a, I have come to put faith in Jesus, and you call Isa. But you. That's I, your own I, personal so my, belief. My question is. Yeah. Um, what is it that you say about that, about putting faith in Jesus? Yeah, for, so... For the sake of, for the, why, is it, why is it that you do not believe in Jesus? Like what's, why is it that this, is, that this is the way and not Jesus? Great question. So I think there's a lot of underlying misunderstanding about Jesus Christ in Islam. So no Muslim can be a Muslim unless they believe in the prophethood and the messengership of Christ Jesus, the son of Mary. So it's not that we don't believe in him. It's an essential part of our faith, an article of faith, to believe in the prophets and messengers of God. Okay? One of the articles of faith is to believe in them. So whoever the prophets were sent, the messengers, Muslims say, we believe in those prophets and messengers. They may not know about them because the Quran mentions about 25 prophets by name. But they were not the only ones that were sent. There are many, hundreds, thousands of prophets were that sent. Some of them that people even don't know about them because it was a long time ago and perhaps their message wasn't transmitted in, 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 in mass to lots of people. But the Quran affirms that there's not been a community in which there was not a warner sent. That means every community had a warner sent to tell them who God is, why should people submit to God, because that is the reasons why they're created. And God says that, okay, he does not punish a nation unless he sends a messenger. So if you take two of these things together, because of God's just, he's just, his justice demands that he tells and sends prophets and messengers to communities before he punishes them. So we are told every community in the past, they had a warner, Telling them what? This is very essential. Avoid, shun, reject the false gods. The Tahut, the false gods. But worship the one and only true God. So if I were to now come back after making the point about faith, if you want to believe in Christ, of course you have to believe in Christ, he's a messenger of God. So we are at the same level on this here. But even Christ identified who the one true God is. Remember, communities in the past, they talked about God. So if I were to ask you, my friend Jesse, according to Christ himself in his teaching, that is some remnants that you find in, in the New Testament, for example. Because New Testament is not the only uh, place 
to go for to find the authentic and reliable teaching of Jesus. This is something we can discuss. Where are the authentic and reliable teaching of Jesus? New Testament claims by the four Gospels and the uh, writings of Paul, for example, that this is what Christ said and did. But we'll, we'll talk about this maybe if you're interested. But I want to ask you, Jesse, according to Christ himself from the scripture itself, who is the only true God? Well, it is the God of there's, there's, it's the God who created me and you and everything. The God according the to the according to Christ's own statements in John 17:3. In John 17:3. Yeah. Well, it's the God of Moses, the God of, of Abraham. Let me clarify why this is a very important verse for Christians to reflect on. In this verse, Christ is turning towards the one who is in heaven yes. over there, yes. and he's addressing him as the Father. Because he's not addressing him as a triune God. He doesn't say, O oh, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, of course. He doesn't do that, right? But this is what the Christians believe. The God is to be Father, Son, and ask any Christians here. I, I, this is what I believe. Exactly. So now, Christ identifies something differently. He says, this is eternal life. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. We can yes. pull this verse up and we can read what yes. it says. Yes. This is eternal life that they should know you, referring to the Father, as I just before, in verse 1, and this is verse 3, that you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. See? Only true God and the one who sent. God and his prophet and his messenger. So now, according to Christ, how many persons is the only true God? How many persons? Well, <laughs> it's one, but it's... One person. It's one, but... One person. It's one. Because it's talking about the father and the father is not three persons that's right anyone who says anyone who says yes. exactly anyone who says three persons is a heretical christian well <laughs> no I would fa say. being father being three persons what i'm saying right. anyone says father right. is a three person is, is a heretical one. christian he's one of three yes. so the father is one person and yes. christ is identifying mm -hmm. the only true god is how many persons acknowledging the one of the first person one person right one person Right. So, is this in line with the, what Christians believe in? The only true God is three persons, when Christ is identifying something differently. So when you say you have faith in Christ, we now know even from the statements attributed to Christ, recorded and transmitted in your scripture, however unreliable that is, it's binding on you. And in here, the explanation is quite clear. Do you remember verses when he says, I'm going to my father and your father, making no distinction about this fathership and sonship. He doesn't stop there. Do you know what he says after this, I'm going to my father and your father? He says, I'm going to my God and your God. Imagine someone, imagine, imagine, Jesse, imagine. I said, I'm going to my God and your God. Would you on your right sound mind take me? as God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the almighty, the sovereign. You wouldn't, because I am telling you in black and white terms, without any ambiguity, without any vagueness, that I have a God that I'm going to. And why this is significant is, is because God is the sovereign and he doesn't have any God, because God doesn't have a God. The idea, some people say in many religions, God has a God, they have not really understood what they mean by God. Was in his humanity, because too. God, God, do you mind taking your own stand and talk? Go ahead, answer, brother. What you remember what I said? People come here. Just it. Just it. Why are people so insecure? Right, they have you to know heckle. How we said in John 17, verse 3, where the Father So just see, I can't just ignore. Ignore the heckles. It's the best John thing to do. 20, so, it says, Jesus does Christ, God have a God, God in your understanding? Does God have a God? I believe that God does not have a God. I, I believe that Jesus Why do you believe that? Why do you believe that God doesn't have a God? That God has no God? Mm. Well, because God calls himself the he calls himself the God above all. He's the, he's, there, there is no God before him. He says, he says that early on in, in the Old Testament, he says, there shall be no gods before me. Right? Mm. He has no God above him. He is, a, he is supreme. I believe all these things. Um, I do believe as well, though, that I currently believe, and I, I I have this conviction, and I and I should I'd be remiss not to say to you, as you've you shared your conviction, with you, that that Jesus is God incarnate, meaning that it's a mystery and it's a foolishness. And I know that in your logic it sounds foolish, but why do you say in my logic? What about in your logic? 
in my, uh, lo logically, in some ways, it seems foolish. In, the, in which, in what way, idea, in logic, it's not foolish? That's what. Let's, let's discuss. Well, let's not discuss what is mysterious. Let's discuss what we can understand and, and comprehend, right? Yes. So go ahead. I mean, when we talk about God, we do run into mystery. Don't we? But I, I think that here, when it comes to Jesus' incarnation, there is actually there is a mystery to that. There's a lot of mystery to it. And, I, and I'm, not, I'm acknowledging that I'm not going to be able to give you any kind of uh, great rhetoric that will convince you that that's true. I'm, but in, for me, I've just seen how Jesus has been the one that has he's saved me from all these things that you've mentioned. From, I, I no longer, um, I, I no longer feel that I that I am bound for hell. And, and I know you may disagree, and that's okay. Um, and, but it's because of Jesus and not because I have done anything good. I myself have actually done much wretched things. And God has shown that to me. And God, God, who this book talks about, but God who sent Jesus, mm. uh, has shown me that through Jesus' death and blood, I'm made clean from my sins. Um, and that is also, that also might sound foolish, sound like foolishness. But, uh, it's a it's a work of God that He's using to he, he'll, he'll actually humble us and our intellects and our, and our pride by using something a way that seems that seems to not make much sense. But it's it, it's God's great work by keeping Himself preeminent in all things, including our salvation. So there's nothing I can even do. It's actually just God Himself who has done all of your works in order to save me. He doesn't deserve it at all. This, this is my belief. And I, and, and uh, that's my belief that I'm sharing with you. Can I just come back on this to, to no. see what I've understood? Yeah? Yeah. All right, just see. So, what you've described is what Jesus has done to you in terms of uh, getting you righteous back to God and the process that involved basically there. What I was addressing rather is something more profound than this. Who is Jesus in relation to God? Yes. Okay? Yes. Because if we find that Jesus is not God and cannot be God, well, then, then these things will be then misplaced. My faith is based on nothing. Yes, I agree. Okay, if this is if you want, this is what you want to say. I mean, that I'm, is, I'm not saying true. anything. Right. That is true. So so I've given you a few reasons already from the statements of Christ where he identifies the only one true God is not him, it's not the Son. Because in Jesus, John, in first John because Jesus 20, in Jesus Christ, Christian is theology the true God and eternal life. Jesus, Jesus Christ that's is the true God. And read this book. Jesus, I, I understand. Yeah. Jesus in Christian Thank theology, you, in Christian theology, is not the only true God. The only true God is explained by Christ Himself, who that is. So, if you want to disagree with Christ, that's up to you, right? Well, I right. mean, uh, in, but in, in John we can, we can read this. Christ, okay, let, let's bring this in. Is Jesus speaking then? Who's he speaking? Was affirming the deity is Jesus, of the and because the is deity Jesus speaking of the and saying the who the only true God is? Because what we want, nature, uh, you're interrupting. You're interrupting. You're interrupting. You're interrupting. We want what we call the red letter Bible. You can pick up the words of Jesus standing clearly, what he claimed. So he claims the only true God is the Father. So if he's, if he's actually saying something other than that, either in complementarity or in, in, in complementary, yes. in complement, or in contradiction to it, we want to assess both of it. So where else has he identified well, the only true good, God? That's a good question. So let's, let's hear friend, that. Could you please find the passage from John yeah. that Jesus is about to be thrown off the from the He says, before Abraham. So Jesse, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, let him do that. So what I'm addressing is, in the absence of any other claims about who the true, only true God is by Christ, this is very categorical and ambiguous statement. Any other statement needs to be understood in line with this clear statement. Clear statement, because that statement that I've just said, it doesn't That's need an explanation. It doesn't need. It, it, it doesn't need an explanation. But see, if God says, for example, in Isaiah, I'm paraphrasing again. Before me, there was no God form. After me. There will be no good form. I alone am God and there is none else. Now, in a statement like this, I don't need someone to explain to me. It means, oh, God is a trinity, consistent Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because it's very clear what it is. There is no God before Him. 
there's no God after him. Me, no, says Jesus speaking in the um, Testament. If you allow he me said, to I am continue. the first and the last. And the Revelation 22, 13, um, Jesus said, I am the first and the last. So that was Jesus speaking in the Old Testament. So what we are establishing is this. The, uh, the heckless will speak, so we have to read oh, focus, 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 right? Sorry, sorry, so right. Let, let's, sorry, sorry. we'll come back to this statement that you want to share with. Yes. So before me, there was no God form, right? Someone is saying me and I. I alone am God and there's none else. Imagine now, we are in a crowd like this. We are a group of people. Not one human. How many humans? Quite a few humans. And if I said, I am the only medical doctor here, can there be anyone else in this group? No, no. no exactly. Right. Because I have excluded everyone else. Right. right. In the Trinity, it's not just I only, whoever speaking. The speaker, when he speaks, he is not speaking on behalf of the other two. He's excluding the other two. Even if he was a trinity for the, for, for the sake of argument, one of this speaker is saying, I alone am God, there's none else. It's not saying we alone are gods and there's no one else besides us. It's using a very precise language in the first person, singular, I. So again, any Christians who are Trinitarians, they really have to battle with this clear verses in the Old Testament in which God is exclusively excluding everything else and saying, I alone am God is none else. Now, imagine now if this was the Father, it would exclude the Son and the Holy Spirit. But what if, as this gentleman said, this is Jesus speaking, if that is the case, if that is the case, there is no God. If that, one at a time, if that is the case, Jesse, Jesus being one person, a hypostasis or a persona in the Trinity is excluding every every other two not to be God. It's He's saying, I alone am God and there's none the else. Do you father. understand the point? The because the father can you tell him to you know, interrupt? The deity uh, of the son, no, no. The same way. Yes. Yeah? So Jesse, so Jesse, so Jesse, as you brother, so Jesse, as we now realize, we have given you clear verses where the ambiguity is not there identifying who God is and how many God is there, okay? So when Christ identifies himself to be the one sent by the only one true God, I would like to really hear, Jesse, your response in terms of why do you then associate partners to this one true God? I see. Well, I, As we discussed earlier about partnership. Yeah. Well, you have, you have provided a lot of verses. I would like to go... To, to that verse. Yeah. I would like to go to one, one verse. Yeah, and, go ahead. Go ahead. Talk about yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, is this the one? This is in Old Testament. Oh, excellent. Well, would you mind going to the part in John? That, yeah, that would be really helpful. I'm sorry, that is taking so long. That's fine. As in, as in uh, I'm sorry, I don't have it. And two, do you only talk to tourists? But you know how I talk said, to people who are sincere, not comedians know, you know, and hecklers. You know how he said, there are only no tourists, God, right? And young people, right? Yes, yes. I this talk to people who are in their nineties too, the worst, says, right? The One foot in the grave. Yes, yes. And there's no body yeah, subscribe to Dawa Wise, where you will yeah. find videos where me, Mansoor, talking to people who are over ninety, nine zero, almost on their grave. And we are all going there. We will all die one day. Not, not in the park. Ah, not in the park. In the park. Of course, we don't talk to people who are insincere, toxic comedians, and hecklers. People who know how to uh, discuss all this stuff. Not the, not the tourists. They just come here for pleasure and they get trapped by you. The sun. Uh, the sun is just a permanent deity of the father. The same way in the book of Hebrews, the father confirms the deity of the son. Right? He says, I believe those things. That's what happened okay. to the Son of God. Brother, so, it's okay. Take him to your side. Don't want to go. Then don't talk to him then. This section here. Hecklers, don't yeah. give them the oxygen to right. continue with their heckling. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. We, so you, you actually quoted parts of John to me, and this is from John too. I can give you more, John, but yeah, let's, let's yeah, hear yeah. it. This is also yeah. from John. Yeah. It's Jesus who said, uh, Very truly, I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. Sure. Um, hold on to this, hold on to this, because we need to go back how to can, it. How can that be true of Jesus? Sure. What is Jesus? Is nearly a prophet in what is he claiming? I, well, I am, is, first of all, that's a reference, I believe, to the name that God used to, to, to Moses in, uh, in Exodus. That's right, so, hallelujah. I am who I, I am. Who I am. You know? Oh, it's, it's okay. I'm not trying to do anything like that. But, um, it's okay. He's uh, so I, that, I believe that's one reference. No, no, what is he claiming again? Saying I am, by saying I am, that's, that in itself is a reference to calling himself the same God 
He's, he's invoking the name that God gave Moses. Where is this passage in? This is John 58. And the Jews knew this, and that's why immediately following this, they attempt to kill him because they believe he is blaspheming. So John, uh, sorry, John 8:58. Uh, John 8:58. That's okay. where that specific verse is, and then okay. the context you'll read. Now so I know the context, but I want to show you something that they, the church fathers yes, yes. or your church um, priests, they don't tell you. So this is something going to be a good um, information for you to go and reflect on it. Well, I would like to hear what you. Have yeah, to yeah, say. yeah. So I want to bring it up um, in the interlinear. Okay. So John 8:58 in the interlinear meaning, we go back to the original manuscript text on that and see what it says here. So I will show you here. He says what? Prin Abraham, janaste ego amy. Prin Abraham, janaste or genomai ego amy. Before Abraham, I was. Right? I am. I, sure. I am. Whatever. Right? Sure. Ego amy. Sure. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Ego amy. Right? Ego amy. In the text, we need to identify whether Igoimi is the name of God. That's true. One second, one second. I'm listening. Do the Greek Christians, listen carefully, do the Christians, Greek Christians, Greek speaking Christians, call God Igoimi? The answer I can tell you, which you don't need to look further, but do look further. They don't. Because Igoimi simply means I am. Even a blind person in the New Testament says Igoimi, right? Ego Amy is just like a construct in which you say, I am, I was, I will be, right? Okay. Now, suppose that that is not so convincing to you, which should be enough convincing, but it's not a name not of God. Context. Because not context. I was just about to give you the context. Let the heckless keep quiet. So, when we say Ego Amy, suppose this Ego Amy was referring to, to the text in the Hebrew, which is Yahya Asher Yahya. Or however you want to pronounce it, Yeha Esher Yeha or Yahua Esher Yahua. Who knows what the pronunciation is? Yeah, because you don't know the actual know. words, how to pronounce the name of God, right? No. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's do something very simple. Let's put the word, original word, back to its right place. Because the word Abraham or Abraham is a name of a person, right? Your name is Jesse. When you go to Italy, do they call you Tunka Unka? Would they call you Tunka Unka or they will call you Jesse? I'm not sure what they'll call me. Right, they'll call you Jesse. When you go to China, will they call you Shangyang? No, they will call you Jesse. Personal names, they will keep it. Excuse me. <coughs> Four limbs. Sorry. One second. Let me get some water. Personal names, we want to keep the names as it is. Like Abraham, the name of Abraham is kept exactly Abraham, even in the Greek text, even though it's a Hebrew word. So why have we not changed the name of Abraham as father of nations? So before the father of nations, ego Amy. We, don't, we haven't done that. The New Testament authors have not done that. Now, we're going to put the name of God back to itself. Yahweh. Okay? So let's see what this claim is all about then. Before Abraham was Yahweh. Hear me out three times. Before Abraham was Yahweh. Before Abraham was Yahweh. Before Abraham was Yahweh. If I, was, if I were Jesus and I was saying that to you, before Abraham was Yahweh, what am I claiming? Well, you're claiming that God came before Abraham. Am I claiming anything about myself? If, it's, if, it, if, it, if that is the correct way to understand the language, then that's right. Yeah, because that's exactly what it is. Here is the interlinear. Look here. So One second, I have not finished yet. Okay, I will give okay. you the chance. That's okay. Look, before Abraham yes. was... Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's okay. I am, right? Look. Yes. Here is the Greek. Rin. Yes. Oh, excuse me. Abraham. Janaste. Mm -hmm. Ego. Amy. And what? So, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, give, me give, me, give me time. <clears throat> I should have worn a mask. Hey, it's okay. It's, patience is okay. <coughs> excuse me, though, for those who are hearing my cough. Now, so what we are saying, what we, what we are saying, Jesse, I'll speak slightly in a lower tone so that I don't get a cough. Here, what has happened in the New Testament evangelism 
is they're trying to kill two birds with one stone when it's totally inappropriate. Because here, there is no two I am's. If Jesus said before Abraham was, I am, I am, then I am Yahweh. Makes sense. But it's not like this. So instead we find it's totally inappropriately mistranslated or misinterpreted to say he's claiming to be God. Because now if we put the sentence back with his original words, as he implied, it makes no claim about Jesus being God. Okay? That's from the language. Now, from the context, from the context, why did he say that? Because he was doing things, the Jewish people at that time, they weren't quite happy with what he's doing. He says, look, my father Abraham saw my day, he, and he rejoiced to see my day. He saw and re That's when they said, you're not even 50 years old. How can you say you met Abraham? I'm paraphrasing, remember, we can go back to the text, no problem, unless you know it already. Only then he said, before Abraham was, I am. Right. So here, Jesus is answering their question about what? How is he... How is he contemporary of Abraham when he's not even 50 years old? Nothing to do about his claiming to be God. He's here saying, even before Abraham, I was there. I am there. Whatever you want you with it. Meaning, he's not only contemporary, he's even before that. Now, this can only prove his pre-existence. Right? Pre-existence pre-existence is not synonymous to being God because we have many other people who have pre-existence. To give you an example, ah, another individual who is also contemporary to Abraham. Now that would be interesting, isn't it? And Abraham gave one-tenth of wealth and so on. We're talking about Melchizedek? Melchizedek. Yes. He's described as what? He's a high priest. No, 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 no. In terms of pre-existence, he's described as what? He has no beginning of days, no end of days, no father, no mother, no genealogy, but he lives continuously, like forever. He has no beginning of days, my friend. So Jesus' claim is he existed before Abraham. This individual exists even before Abraham and with anyone else because he has no beginning. There's even a higher claim. So I want to ask you, Jesse, does that make Melchizedek in any way, shape or form? Divine. Mel Melchizedek is very, very unusual to me. I don't understand how. Whoever that is. Yeah. Whoever that is. But Does that make Melchizedek you, divine? Well, no. Excellent. Are Thank you. Are you saying that a man can have no beginning? No, what I'm saying is, I am just giving you a response to these supporting verses people bring in Christianity in support of deity of Christ. So, my, my so now, so my, my response was, we find individuals who has a more of a higher claim than Jesus. And yet, according to your admission, it doesn't make them divine. Except so, 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 so. Can he speak? Oh, he will right, speak, he will speak, he will speak. I want to make my claim, uh, my statement clear. Pre-existence of anyone, according to the biblical text, doesn't make someone divine, according to your own admission. So even if Jesus was pre-existing, it doesn't say that, it only says he was before Abraham. It doesn't say it was before Adam or anyone I like that. Clarify, I don't believe that. I don't believe that a man can have no beginnings. So, so who is Melchizedek? Who was well, contemporary? Melchizedek is mysterious in, in the sense that it might that might not necessarily mean that Melchizedek is a man with no beginning. Because I don't believe such a man can who is it? exist. Only God can exist. Is he God? No is he God? I don't believe he is. So he's he, it could he, be a poetic device. Uh, uh, no now we cannot go to. In poetry, the alternative is that no, 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 no. Look, look, whenever we're dealing with claims, extraordinary claims, we can't simply say it's poetic. We have to take literally as it says. Uh, not, always. Not, not always. Then that means that means every single statement Christ said, I say it's poetry. No, he doesn't no. mean I'm God. Well, you know, if you throw it out, like no, 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 no. But not throwing out Jesse. Poetry is actually no Jesse. Written that way. In, it's, it's purposeful. In arguments like this. I'm going to use every single statement that you bring. It's all about poetry. I, I understand that that's a cop out. It's not a cop out. It's being consistent. As so in, if I, in. if you want to be consistent, I will be consistent. So you have no evidence to sub substantiate the deity of Christ because it's all about poetry. So when we go to the verses which is not poetical, that will determine to understand that. So now we realize. Yes. Well. At one point, by the way, here it was an accusation of blasphemy. Did the Jewish people? A faction of them accused Christ of blasphemy. Yes, they did. And what was his response? What was his response? Mm -hmm. I can give you his oh, 1460. Mark 1460. 
What was his response of accusation of blasphemy? Do you want me to ask you all about that? Do you have a question? Yeah, I can ask you. So you're mere man, you claim to be God? This is what they said, right? Yes. It's not like he wanted to say, oh, what do you, what for, for what actions, what have I done, what have I, that you claim that I'm claiming to bless him. So, they said, you, as, even as a mere man, you claim to be God. Oh, that's a good um, accusation to hear, right? So what was his response? I know, I know you got it. Do you know what the response is? Well, this is in trial. Yeah, what was his response? His response was that God is a God. How can it be so insane? There's no such thing as small G and capital G, my friend. This is a manufacturing retrospective trying to water down what Christ is saying. It's Elohim. God said Elohim, sort of a small g. Well, the Elohim is uh, Jesus was created. God created Elohim. God is called Elohim. Bereshit bara Elohim. Yeah, that, that, yeah? that makes it. That does. It gets it confusing. It there are created beings also called Elohim. No, no. So God is called Elohim, right? So it's not as a small g. It's not a small g. So here Jesus is saying, if you're not rich anymore, you are called Elohim. Sons of the Most High. Who's the Most High? And these Elohim are the sons of the Most High. Okay. So are they divine? Being the sons? Right. Because in the Old Testament, in Psalms 82, verse 1 to 6, God tells these judges, You will die like men. Because they're not gods. But He presides in the assembly of El, in the assembly of gods. Do you believe God has an assembly of gods? How many gods are there? There's only one god. So, so when God has, has an assembly with gods, who are the other gods? False gods. gods are created beings. So, god. so now you find God is presiding over other false gods, because they're not really gods. Because you cannot have well, yes. false gods to be God. We, we should not, if we worship them, we are worshiping false gods. That's but God calls them gods. Okay? So gods Jesus, so why did Jesus bring this verse to refute them? Because even if he said and claimed himself to be Elohim, God, it would not be a blasphemy. Because God calls people gods. Do you see that? God called people gods. So if you're one of the judges and I said, I am God. Yep. But he said, I only said I'm Ben Elion, son of Elion. Right? They were sons of the Most High and sons of the Most Elion. It doesn't make him God. So that means the accusation of blasphemy is debunked so utterly that they had nothing else to say. Because Jesus Christ was given the knowledge of the book of the Jewish people. God taught him the book and the wisdom and the gospel. So Christ was able to totally dismantle these accusations they brought about blasphemy. Now, the same people accuse Jesus Christ of being demon possessed and call you a madman. Do you accept the accusation to be true? Ah, very interesting. That means any accusation people make, you can't take this accusation as to be the claim of the individual who's been accused of. But they, but they, but they're only accusing. They accuse Christ to be madman, demon possessed. But you'd say the accusation is false. But you, you'd say the accusation is false, right? I say that their accusation, that accusation that he's demon possessed is false. Yes. And what about that accusation about that he's blaspheming? That claiming to be Jesus, that he's claiming to be God? Yeah. Well, I think that because it happens right in the passage where he says that he was before Abraham, I would like to get It's not the same passage. I would like to get It's not the same passage. It's a different passage. I'm talking about when they threw him out. Yeah, him out. but here Jesus responded and he refuted them. So now we have a refutation of Christ saying, I didn't claim to be God. It's not the same passage, but it is the same book. The same no, no, no. The event, it's not about the same book. We're talking about historical events. Yes. Things happened, people right. came and accused him. Right. He refuted them in that event by saying, look, number one, I didn't claim to be God, but I only said. So it's why is it not registering with the Christian mind? He, he didn't say I'm God in any way, shape or form. He's simply saying, but I only said I am Ben Elion. Yes, I would like to, I would like to read this. Go ahead, read. Thanks, we need to hear it. Yeah, I would like 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 to hear it
Okay, so And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it these men testify against? And he remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the son of the person? We've got, we've got two more minutes and then we'll go. Am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? We have heard his blessing of your decision. If he was just a man, this wouldn't be blasphemy. If he's claiming to be God, it's blasphemy. What did he say? And he's saying in retaliation that an accusation made by them is no proof that Jesus is in fact God himself. Thank you, Jesse. You understood well. I do believe that it is No, no, he's doing it on pain of death. I know. I, I, okay, on I pain of death, is, it's not, not like any kind of like confusion about what he's saying. I believe that to me. No, no, it's in the text because he I, cleared it. He said, I mean, you see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. Yes. That's a reference in the Old Testament. That's right. In Daniel, yes, where the, the son, son of man is a deity. Absolutely. And he said, I am and that's a huge thing for us to talk about. Jesse, Jesse, in response to how this. Would you, how would you respond? Not to the accusations. What is it? What is it? Saying? Words of Jesus. What is he saying? Um, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, coming with the clouds of heaven. Sure. Is he saying I'm God? Yes. I believe that. Yes. So if you go to, listen, are you a son of man? Oh, no, no, before you go somewhere else, in here. I am not the Son of Man. No, no, there is no such thing as the Son of Man there or is, a Son of Man. I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you why. Is God a man or a son of man? Uh, he, well, Jesus. Now I'm asking you just a simple question. Is God a man God or a son of man? God the Father is not a man or the son of man. So God, 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 God. God is God. Is he a banana? Is God. he a turtle? God. No, God is God. God is God. So God is God. Jesus no, is God. this is. Let's understand something. God has a class or a category called God. Yes. In that category, human beings don't fit. Trees don't fit. Elephants don't fit. Bananas don't fit because it's a different category altogether. God is always going to be God in this category. He doesn't diminish himself from being God. Just see? God doesn't diminish himself from being God. He'll always be God like he always was God. He always is God. That nature of God will never change. The moment you say God is a man, you are now incorporating a different nature. Now I want to ask you, Jesse, did God lose some of his divine nature? Did he lose some of his divine nature? And so it's not. So did he add something, an external nature to his divine nature? He, he incarnated into it. Did he add to his divine nature? Uh, no, I don't If I have a cup which is full, no. you can take something away from it to put something in there, right? But if it's already full, you can't add anything to it. If God is already fully God, and you add a banana, you can't add to nature God, because it's already complete. You can't add a nature of a human being and say, God took another nature. It makes simply no sense. Let me explain to you why. If you are 100% something, like knowledgeable, right, knowledge, can you add any more knowledge to it? No. No. So, so when you add... Ask him, just give him a second. Give him a second. Uh, so overall nature changed. Hmm? Overall nature changed. Hmm? Uh, no, 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 no. Don't give me too many suggestions, right? Let me handle as I can, okay? That's fine. We don't want to overwhelm him too much. Is that okay? No, no, I'm saying don't overwhelm him too much. Let him take things slowly. Okay. Okay. So let me wrap up. How did you know that? If I ask him that, will that, will he understand? Right. He, will that change his mind? It's not about... Uh, okay, about Jesse, it's about enough it's of destruction from Heckless. So now, so when you have something, when you have something complete, the nature of God is such that he's a complete God in every way, shape or form in his divinity. He does not lack anything. He doesn't lack knowledge. He doesn't lack power. He doesn't lack glory. He doesn't lack any of his divine attributes right so if you add something to it what you're doing is you are adding something which is jesse i'm not here i didn't want to have a giant argument thank you jesse jesse i didn't realize smart man it's okay it's okay he's handling this very well i understand so do you one of you i'm not an apologist so do you follow so far if you are 100 percent divine you can't add anything to the divinity. All you are going to add are going to add imperfections. 
deficiencies, weaknesses, because God is the only perfect being, the only being which is absolutely perfect. Other than God, everything else is his creation. Are you listening? Everything else other than God is his creation. And creation is always limited, dependent, finite, meaning they are deficient, imperfect. So if you, if you add, if you add anything to God, which is perfect, you are adding imperfection. So the incarnation is actually polluting God, corrupting God of his perfection. That's why the idea of incarnation to a sound intellect doesn't make any sense. As I said earlier, it, it is... Sound intellect, not mystery. It's obviously clear. This, this is a fence, right? Somebody says this is God. Is you and I are not going to say. You're screaming at it. You That's and I are clear. not going to say it's a mystery. You don't know how this fence is God. You will say, look, this fence oh, cannot be God. Bush. Because God, my last point, bush? my last point, my last point, God needs to be for his divinity, possessor of some necessary attributes. One of the necessary attributes for a necessary being is called self-sufficiency or independence, being independent and self-sufficient. Now, do you consider, because it's my last example, I have to go, right? Oh, you're gonna... Do you consider, okay, you're not gonna listen to do you consider, argument. Jesse, Jesus Christ possesses self-sufficiency or aseity, aseity being a say, self-sufficiency and being independent? Because if you say yes, if you affirm, we can then examine. If you say no, then he cannot be God. So from the outset, does he possess self-sufficiency? And what I mean, what I, what I mean by this is, let me explain before you say so. Okay, maybe too um, preemptive. Someone who's self-sufficient doesn't need anyone else for their own existence. For example, for their own life. For example, if I were self-sufficient, what it means is. I don't need God to even to exist. Do you understand? If I were self-sufficient, I don't need even God to exist because I am independent of God for my own existence. That's what it means, self-sufficient. I don't need anyone else besides me. Self-sufficient, sufficient myself. So if Jesus was self-sufficient, he does not need the Father to exist. He doesn't need the Holy Spirit to exist. So let me ask you, is Jesus the need is not oh, no, no. is Jesus is Jesus self-sufficient in such a way that he can exist without the father existing he's screaming at you, you that's that, this, this, this is the kind of question that I think is if I were to say yes that would be actually an, an irreverent blasphemy of the fact that God does exist the father and the Holy Spirit and Jesus know that you not need the other I didn't say need I said they are one no I said so I, I, I said I said and clarify so no, saying, no clarify clarify can Jesus exist without the father existing Jesus doesn't exist without the Father existing. So he's it's dependent on the Father. Because if we, because so he's we, dependent we on the Father. Say, can, he's not self-sufficient. Can, can, can the Father, can the father, father transform into a unified? No, no, no. Let me just that point. Like, when you say, can the Father transform, meaning can the Almighty be less than Almighty? It makes no sense. It's a contradiction. But we're talking about Jesus is identified to be God, divine, possessor of not partial divinity, yes. full divinity. Full divinity means you have to be fully divine with the attributes of self-sufficiency. So, if he's self-sufficient, he doesn't need the Father even to exist. But you know very well, he was eternally, atemporally dependent on the Father to beget him. Otherwise, he would not be here. Just say, think about this. Think about it. We have to go now because it's been a while. If you want to say something in return, go and speak. But I'm going to end this discussion. I think we've given you enough. I've given you enough. But if you want to make a point, go go ahead. But as I said already, run away. You run away from me. I don't speak to hecklers. No, no, get out of here. That's it. What are you telling him now? What's what's left? You have to say anything in return because I talked about only God is self-sufficient. Jesus is not. I think what I've gathered is that from what we've been saying, I could read this passage from Mark, or I could read a few other things mm -hmm. from here that we were looking at before. Yeah. And it, it's not going to change your mind, probably not many other people's minds. Because it doesn't make sense. Well, I don't believe that's, that's the case. We've established that so far, in our, but no, almost no, an hour no, of discussion. You, no, because you've been talking the whole time. But I have and given you time to, to reflect on what I've said. No, no, no. I've given you time to reflect. Yes, you have actually. And okay. In fact, you're doing it now. You've, 
Why are you now becoming something why different? Sorry, I don't mean to be aggressive. No, no, why are you now being passively aggressive? I'm not trying to be passively aggressive. Well, Have I actually, said anything that didn't make I'm sense? Not being aggressive, but I suppose passive. I'm aggressive. Passive. Passive. Being aggressive. I suppose, man. you know what? Not, not passive. Now I'll be confrontational. You're gonna pro okay, you only got two minutes because I'm going, as I, I said earlier. You I can be confrontational. That what, I believe that, that what you have done here, because I did want to have an open conversation. We did. But what you have done is you have, in fact, spoken over all of these points, and you've talked over and over and over. And over very, very. I've made fast. my points. Very you've made fast. your points. And you have made lots and lots of points. Yeah. Many of which I wish I could have said something to. But you moved so fast that I couldn't have. Stopped. Oh, is that the case? Yes, Why didn't you stop me? Why didn't you stop me? Because you I understand. And, and now you realize because there was no response. If I could have been civil, then, then oh, we weren't civil. Here you are, people. Now I wasn't civil all the time. I no, 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 no. I think the civility it's is when we do pause and allow for someone to respond to points, but rather you went so fast. Did you ever tell me it was next, too fast? To I should have. I you should, should have. have so whose like problem that? is that? Mine or yours? Uh, that particularly. I, I own that. I, I should have said. Nice. Right. So, so don't make an acquisition now. It's your problem. Next time, this is a, this is a, this is a good advice. This is an advice for you. Next time, next time, no, next time, when people are fast, tell them it's too fast right. for me. I agree with you. I'm sorry. Good. So now, Jesse. So I'm going to live with, with this. If you die in this state of asserting partners with God, I, I we said already, yes. the abode will be eternal hellfire, there will be no coming out. Yes. So you know the message of Islam is very clear. I okay? Do know that. That's fine. Islam is from the devil. I Jesus do not reject Islam Christ. Is he is the mighty messenger of God. That if you are wrong, you too. Face the same. I accept we Christ. He's one of the mighty messengers of God. I accept yes. Christ Muhammad that you worship God. Oh, you don't. Muhammad was a Trinitarian. Look, look. If we were to go further, the moon God. you would have known even the Bible that you get the message from, you can't even rely on it. This is one of the weakest reports that you can even think about it. Do you know? Do you know? For you to think about, because I have to really go, right? Do you know? the integrity, character integrity of the writers of the Gospels. Were they honest? Were they possessor of good memory? And did they lie? You have no clue. You have anonymous writers writing about it and you take your whole life based on these anonymous writers who could be blatant liars. The reason why I'm saying this, your New Testament has four Gospels. But were they the only ones written? Were they? I, I, think, I, think, I, I, think, I think if we're about to finish, okay. what, I, what I wanted to, what I want to say, everyone. you believe in God and I do too, but I believe in Jesus. We're not going to be able to talk to each other. We have this. talked. I have given my reasons I why I reject Christian understanding. Say he's not. So if I can, you didn't listen. If we walk away now, I believe that Jesus has the sufficiency to make you believe that he is... Is he self-sufficient? But you also believe that... He's not self-sufficient. You also believe that God has the sufficiency to do that. So if you go and pray... I am praying you, every day. pray for me? No, I mean for me. The moon God. Yeah, I pray for you. you go and pray for me. I pray for you. I will go and pray for you. And whoever... With one condition though. And God will be the judge. And his judgment will, will either, I hope, mercifully convert you or mercifully convert me. One condition. You need to be sincere to be guided. I agree. And I say okay, let's leave it there. I say the same to you. Exactly. 17 times a day at least minimum. And, and I do finish by apologizing that I didn't That's fine. Earlier. No problem. That's okay. You're a good man. I really appreciate it. You're, no, no, you're a good man. And you did stand on your ground compared to the heckless trying to take over you thinking oh, that you're yes, going right. I didn't want to debate. Just ran out him. Just keep talking over him. Yeah, you're going to run away now. Yeah, you're going to run away now. You're going to run away now. Ask some questions. Ask some questions. Just run away. Keep begging, Mansoor. You need Mansoor for your salvation. It's like you need Mansoor for your salvation. What a sad state of Christianity. He's still not You need Mansoor for their salvation. What a sad state.